Well, I'm very pleased today to have with me Dr. Stephen Wolf, who's a professor of environmental governments in my department. That's the Department of Natural Resources at Cornell. And I just wanted to thank you, Steve, for doing that independent study with Summer Dean, who is the TA for this course. And I know she really, really gained a lot from uh, working with you this past semester. So thank you. You're very welcome. Nice to be here. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about environmental governments today and how it relates to civic ecology practices. So first, I wanted to just ask you to tell me a little bit about your research and how it relates to civic ecology. So my research generally examines innovative contemporary experiments aiming at improving relations between the economy and ecology. And the research examines largely land-intensive industries, including forestry and agriculture, but more generally interested in rural economies and industrial economies, and the ways that government, market actors, and community-based actors interact in productive and pathological ways. So can you relate that at all, just what you know about civic ecology from our conversations in the hallway? Sure. So I understand civic ecology to be a cluster of activities that are locally grounded, involving local actors, supported by professionals and scientists to take on and address challenges and opportunities in a local setting. And I think it's important to understand that movement, if you will, if you want to think of it as a movement, although I think it's quite loose and not particularly mm -hmm. uh, centrally coordinated. And there's a lot of diversity there, which I think we can view as a positive. But that's a historical response in my mind to experiments or efforts that have not panned out. Specifically, I think we can understand the environmental movement in the early period, let's say the 1970s in the Western world, as a state-centered initiative. Mm -hmm. And that continues. The state remains quite relevant. But the era in which federal legislation was really the center of the plate has come to a close. We moved through a period where market relations and mm -hmm. incentives and business was viewed with some enthusiasm. And that continues. But I think it's been eclipsed in some ways as people's patience and anxieties have grown. And now the latest uh, craze is community-based action. Mm -hmm. So I situate civic ecology in a historical frame where people are actively experimenting and in some sense grasping for meaningful ways forward given the tremendous challenges we face. Mm -hmm. Do you see this as an environmental movement per se or just sort of a collection of activities? Well, it depends how we define a movement. I think uh, currently it's a variety of activities. I think they, in some circles, generate a lot of enthusiasm and, att and attention. In other ways, I think we can and should view them as relatively marginal or peripheral activities at this time. So they're one of the many points of light, if you will, out there to which I think we should attach some optimism, but at the same time some skepticism about exactly what types of transformational goods can they deliver in what types of time frames and mm -hmm. with what other complementary activities would need to be going on and intersecting with them to make them truly meaningful mm -hmm. as a response to the, in my mm -hmm. view, the massive social and ecological challenges we face. So I'm going to push you a little bit more on that question about environmental movement because some people have talked about civic ecology practices as part of a civic environmental movement so that even though each practice alone is very small, they're part of this larger sort of collaborative movement that's replaced the more uh, top-down movement that you talked about from the 1970s. So I just wondered what your thoughts are on that. All right. So I'm not an expert in social movements, but I understand in the last 15 or so years, people have been interested in what they call new social movements. Mm -hmm. And new social movements are characterized uh, in contrast to old social movements in that they are not focused necessarily on legal change on political reform, that they're more nebulous, mm -hmm. they're more um, multifaceted, and they're not particularly politically pointed, mm -hmm. like the women's movement, like mm -hmm. the environmental mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, my response would be that the civic ecology movement fits into this, mm -hmm. that it's quite loose, mm -hmm. uh, there's tremendous diversity represented in it, it's mm -hmm. not particularly tightly organized, mm -hmm. um, and 
if I mean, in no way in my mind would we want to put the uh, environmental movement, the women's movement, and the civic, civic ecology movement on the same level. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a much uh, newer, smaller, more scattered, mm -hmm. and at this moment, mm -hmm. less significant mm -hmm. uh, set mm -hmm. of activities. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that in 15 or 20 years we won't be talking about it as mm -hmm. a truly important and potentially revolutionary uh, mm -hmm. activity. But at this time, um, it's one of many things going on that merit attention. Mm -hmm. Okay. So potentially visionary, but we're not sure at this point. Um, uh, so I wanted to just ask you um, a little bit more about governance since that's your expertise. And some people have claimed that civic ecology practices are the organizations which um, conduct these practices are part of this Eleanor Ostrom's polycentric governance systems. And I wonder what you think about that. Yeah. So um, I just taught uh, one of Eleanor Ostrom's polycentrism articles in my course, Environmental Governance, this semester. And when you read that article, um, she, I think, uh, emphasizes, um, on the one hand, the significance and the value of attending to local action. And mm -hmm. this draws our attention away from nature, uh, nation states, and mm -hmm. it draws our attention away from things like Kyoto Protocol and global environmental governance. And it really draws attention to the potential and the necessity to focus on local actors and local mm -hmm. communities in some ways as substitutes or alternatives to big multilateral multinational mm -hmm. action, but in other ways as complements. Mm -hmm. But when we think about polycentrism, uh, we're really thinking about a competitive framework, and that's the beginning of polycentrism. And it really came from Eleanor Ostrom's husband, Vincent, mm -hmm. who, who turned her on to those ideas. And the potential for competition between local service providers in their historical analysis, it was police, mm -hmm, local right, policing right. provision, as the engine of attracting and retaining local investment mm -hmm. as ways for communities to compete. Mm -hmm. Compete for young people, compete for job creation, compete for uh, direct investment from corporations who would want to move there because of the attractive and successful and dynamic nature of the community. So, I think as far as I could take the analysis of polycentrism applied to civic ecology is local action with potential to create spillovers mm -hmm. outside of the community gardens, outside mm -hmm. of the oyster restoration, mm -hmm. outside of particular activities, which could, over time, in a perfect storm, mm -hmm. create some type of upward movement. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where I think the linkage lies as we think about polycentrism applied mm -hmm. to civic ecology. Mm -hmm. And then I did want to ask you about power relations, because I know that's something we've talked about quite a bit, and something that civic ecology practices have been critiqued for ignoring. So can you comment on that? Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think there's two, two elements of importance. One, importantly, communities and local organizations, just like families, have their own pathologies. And we shouldn't view them romantically or nostalgically. Mm -hmm as perfect, harmonious, flat organizations. Mm -hmm. There are always elites. There are always historic relations of privilege, whether it's based on gender, it's based on race, it's based on economic status, it's based on educational access. There's lots of heterogeneity within communities and within projects. And mm -hmm. so we should attend to that issue in terms of power inside these organizations. But I think the more obvious question is really the external relations. And so if we think about civic ecology and we think about it as a local response, tapping into local resources, looking for local synergies, it really begs for me the question of what the heck is the state doing? Mm -hmm. Where are politics at a national stage have gone? Have we given up on the nation state? Have we given up on calling the vast resources of our nation to deal with problems? And this, of course, invokes the critique of neoliberalism, an idea that comes out of the World War II period and really a critique of nation states. And whether it's fascism, socialism, or giant welfare states as the conservative critique of the UK and the United States grew, mm -hmm. neoliberalism is a turn away from the nation state and traditionally an embrace of market relations. Here in our conversation, we're really talking about local self-sufficiency mm -hmm. and pulling up by your bootstraps and solving your own problems mm -hmm. and don't wait for the state to solve your problems for you. Mm -hmm. 
And I think there's something to be said for that. But at the same time, if we've given up on the nation state and we forget to ask what's going on with national tax revenues and national mm -hmm. le legitimacy and la national authority, uh, I think it's game over. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that there are power questions, I think that power question comes into what are we doing with national resources, which are uh, vast. Mm -hmm. And if they're not coming to bear on local problems, what are we spending that money on? Mm -hmm. And who gets to decide what we're spending that money on? Mm -hmm. Appreciate that perspective. So is there anything else, any other thoughts you'd like to add? No, I think that there's a interesting set of questions around the potential of local actors to solve local problems. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, it's been viewed in kind of oppositional terms, in terms of hierarchical mm -hmm. um, solutions in the form of scientists, if you will, and traditional no, uh, modes of expertise. And that's been opposed to Lo local knowledge, right. local self-sufficiency, local heroes. And I don't think we have to think about it in such stark terms. Mm -hmm. I think that we can understand, and just like Cornell University is playing a very important role in facilitating local action through civic ecology, is not to get caught in the trap of thinking either global or local, mm -hmm. but to think about a networked approach, a relational approach, a multi-level approach, and to not be blinded to the limitations of local actors mm -hmm. and at the same time not be blinded to the ignorance and the corruption and the uh, slowness of response from big centralized historically dominant actors mm -hmm. and so if we can think about interplay complementarity mm -hmm. healthy tensions and cooperation mm -hmm. um, perhaps there's a way forward well thanks Steve Thank really you. appreciate having this larger perspective on what we're talking about and um, looking forward to working with you I appreciate it.